Today's guest is Matthew Kulfers. He's an iOS engineer at Will Willow Tree Apps, which is a digital strategy, design, development, and growth company uh, focused in, in the mobile technology space. So thank you for joining me today, Matthew. Thank you for having me, Jeremy. I'm really excited to be here. So Matthew, talk a bit about yourself. You know, where are you from? Uh, who are you? And what is it that you actually do? Okay. Yeah. So I am originally from Texas. My father was a military man himself. So we moved around a little bit. Um, we eventually ended up landing in Mississippi, which is probably the last place you would expect an iOS developer to live. Um, when I got old enough, I started doing a little bit of moving around myself, kind of jumping different career paths and, and trying different things out, trying to really identify what it was that I want to do. And uh, I ended up living in Virginia, Florida, uh, all over the place, because I also ended up joining the military. And uh, now I'm back in Mississippi working as an iOS developer. I've worked on some really awesome projects, worked with NASA, um, helped develop some um, very popular apps for companies like iFit. Um, my company also works for Capital One, T-Mobile, really big names in the uh, mobile space. And uh, yeah, oh, interesting. I mean, in a nutshell. So you said military. I, I, I happen to know that's Navy. How did you make that decision, right? What, what prompted you to join the Navy? So that happened at a very early stage in my life. I, when I was in high school, I went through, we had a Navy JROTC program um, and I did very well at it. In fact, uh, I ended up being like the top three leaders in JROTC and got a lot of opportunity to go out and do like a lot of like, you know, leadership retreats and things like that over the summer breaks and um, it was just something that really excited me. Um, and I loved the atmosphere, the camaraderie that was there. Uh, so I ended up signing up for the Navy. My initial rate was supposed to be, um, special warfare. Um, but <laughs> at classifications, the United States military decided that I was better suited as a jet engine mechanic. Um, so I got, I got moved over to what they needed and not what I wanted, um, which tends to happen. But it, it's, it's kind of ironic that that happened that way, because that's actually what my dad did in the Navy. He was also a jet engine mechanic. So, uh, yeah, that's how I landed there. And I ended up actually enjoying it quite a bit. All right. So then as you transition, as we many of us do, right, either through retirement or, or leaving early, as you transition out of the Navy, how did you land that first you know, civilian job? Ooh, so my first civilian job out of the Navy um, was actually in IT working. Um, well, I'm not, I'm not really sure if it qualifies as IT. I worked for this computer shop. Um, I always had from a younger age, an interest in computers and things like that. I, you know, 14, 15, I played around with computers. I actually got in trouble for computers one time. It was almost, almost went to jail for 16 years oh, no. um, as a juvenile. <laughs> um, and so I kind of had this, this skill set in computers and uh, this local company um, that repaired computers, TVs, cell phones, things like that, um, recognized that I had a skill and an affinity for technology. Um, so they, they offered me a job and I worked there. That was my first job out of the military. Wow. So then what's the path look like that brought you to iOS development? Was it straight or was it crooked? Pooh, it was crooked, Jeremy. I'll tell you, it was it was all over the place. So I, I worked there for a short while and I ended up leaving there and I went into sales okay. of all things. So I transitioned into telecommunication sales specifically. I started working for a local company here called C Spire and I was just a run of the mill sales rep. Um, turns out I was actually really good at that too. Made a ton of money selling things. <laughs> Um, and it, I guess you could say it kind of like had a little bit of overlap there because right. I already had, you know, the experience with repairing phones from that first job at the Ma and Pa, um, Gator Computers is what it was called. Um, so I had that experience working on those devices and then I got into selling those devices and I could talk at great length about those devices, what they could or couldn't do. And this was when smartphones were really becoming a thing. And I thought, man, this is, this is freaking cool. I like this. But I ended up staying in sales even after that job working at C Spire and I went to work for Comcast. Um, 
where I was selling home internet and business internet and, and, and things like that. And the transition for iOS development did not come at that point. Okay. Um, it was just kind of a, a, I guess you could say like, you know, that thing nagging you in the back of your head mm -hmm. that tells you, this is what you should probably do. This is what you like, but then you, you procrastinate and you put it off and you put it off and you put it off. That's what I did. So at a certain point there, I started college though. I started college at Full Sail University out of Winter Park, Florida. They had a mobile development specific degree track that I was interested in. And I started it and I failed miserably. <laughs> oh no. Over and over and over again. I would go into a programming class and I just had too much stuff going on in my personal life. I just went through a divorce and I was a single dad at the time. And I just couldn't keep up with it. Um, so I ended up dropping out. And that's why I stayed working at Comcast for an extended period of time. Wow. The, yeah, it's, it's, it's the, the, like I said, the, the, the track to get there has been absolutely wild. Um, and then I met my, my now wife. Um, and she kind of like motivated me to continue to, to work towards that. But in the interim, I needed to find a better way to make money than working at Comcast because I wasn't I wasn't making anything at Comcast. Comcast does not pay um, even their sales reps. Even when you're making sales, they they find reasons not to pay. Um, so I ended up applying to work for a local law enforcement agency and work as a police officer. Hmm. Um, and I kind of found a, a bit of a calling in that. And then I went to college while I was working as a law enforcement officer and just studied, 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 studied. And th thankfully the second time around went a whole lot better <laughs> that's good. than the, the first time around. Wow. And that's, that's an interesting uh, story of perseverance then, right? Right. You went and you tried to be a programmer and code stuff and it didn't work, but yet you didn't give up, circle back to it and did it again. And yet in that time, you know, with, with the effort, right. Which there's never, there's never no effort. Um, you were able to, to figure it out and make it work. And uh, that's, that's, a, that's an amazing story for, for us in IT, right? There's so many things that we are like, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. Well, maybe we should try. Maybe we should try again, right? And it yeah. become that challenge. Yeah, and, and it's funny you point that out, Jeremy, because really and truthfully, that's what, now that I'm, I've been in programming for a couple of years now, um, having worked on iOS, Android, cross-platform apps, like all these different crazy apps and, and technologies. The one thing that I realized now um, is that the IT world is about that perseverance. Yep. Um, because the truth of the matter is the IT world will chew you up and spit you out mm -hmm. because it changes so rapidly. And it takes, a, it takes that perseverance and that determination to wake up every single day and say, you know what, I'm gonna learn something new today. Um, I'm going to learn a new programming language. I'm going to learn a new tech stack. I'm going to learn a new um, data structure or algorithm that helps push you forward. But the moment you reach that goal, technology puts the, the finish line out farther. Right. And you constantly have to chase it. And you'll never be um, that guy that's at the top that's the best that there is in the world. I mean, people would argue Linus Torvalds is, is the greatest you know, guy um, mm -hmm. for Linux in the world. But he would probably tell you that the, the finish line is just a little farther out. There's more we can do here. Um, so those personal experiences that I've talked about with law enforcement and, and failing over and over again really is the, the secret sauce, if you will, to how I got to where I'm at today. That's amazing. So, And how long have you been doing iOS development? I've been doing iOS and Android develop now for right at coming up on five years. Oh, fantastic. Yep. So, I mean, how, uh, and how similar, I mean, it's not like coding. I know it's not similar to what you did in the Navy, but like, was there skills and personal interaction stuff you learned that you still lean back on? Right. Cause I'm a fellow person who came out of the military, right? We understand that structure that the military gives you, right. Regimented tells you how to do things. Right. Did you find that that has been useful to you through this perseverance that you've had in your career. Hmm. I'm who that's a tough one. <laughs> I would probably say that 
it's kind of a twofold answer to that. Um, what I did in the military has basically no crossover with what I do professionally. Um, at least at this juncture, maybe one day I'll work on an app for flight, you know, systems or whatever. That would be cool, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, but I would say the, the soft skills that I learned in the military carry over. A lot of people look at people that work in IT and they say, oh, these are guys that, you know, 30 year old guy living in mom and dad's basement. But that I, I've learned that is so far from the truth. Um, in the military, it's incredibly diverse. We've got people of every race, creed, religion, gender, um, whatever your identity is, is in the military. And you learn to appreciate how that diversity impacts your day-to-day -day working life. Mm, that's true. And then going into the software world, we see it again. Like everybody knows the stereotype about people working out of you know India and things like that. They've got this idea of what kind of people they are when you actually work with them and realize how skilled and how talented they are, the who they are and where they come from or where they come from rather or what they look like doesn't even matter anymore. Right. Because you're just working with somebody that you absolutely enjoy working with. And the same thing is true of like working with women and men and, you know, some people are more quiet, some people are more boisterous. It's just, it's exciting to, to work in a, a field that share so much with the military in that diversity area. Mm -hmm. um, and it really shows in what we're producing for, you know, people like um, maybe some of your listeners or viewers. That's so true. So as you've gone through your, your career and as varied as it's been, what's something you, if we came to you and said, Matthew, today you get to make a change that uh, will make us better. What, what might that change be for you that you would hope that we would consider? <sighs> You know, in software, I think probably the biggest thing, at least for me, is how much wasted time we have. Mm -hmm. We waste a lot of time um, doing things that don't necessarily, um, that aren't productive. We have so many meetings every day. And these meetings that we go to, for the most part, are a waste of time for 80% of the people there. I, I like to say that a lot of meetings very much often should follow the 80-20 rule. Figure out what 20% of people need to be there and let the other 80% get back to work. Because um, I'm, I'm very much rather, um, would rather produce new code or new features or fix a bug rather than spend an hour and a half in a meeting where I don't say anything to anyone. Right. Well, that's a good change, right? There's, there's that phrase, right? This meeting could have been an email. Yeah. Um, and uh, that, is, that is so typical in IT, and I, I, I agree with you. I, I, I would hope somebody would take your suggestion that we change some of that approach. Um, all Truthfully, right. like, now that, it, it's funny you say that, because I feel like a lot of companies are starting to, to recognize that pitfall, and they're trying to turn it around. Um, but we're kind of at a weird stage now where we've got um, a lot of younger people coming in They've got some older people going out and there's a little bit of a clash there with the different working styles. Like generally speaking, the older working group, they're very much more structured, much more rigid, much more routine. Whereas the younger crowd tends to be much more fluid, much more um, flexible and things like that. And I feel like there's a lot of contention that comes out of that um, instead of people, instead of both sides coming together and working on the problem to fix it. Yeah, that's something to consider as well. I mean, there's the generations, right? There's four generations now in the workforce. And those, yeah. like you said, those generation differences can can cause a little bit of rubbing conflict. Um, that's interesting. So, so what's next for you? What's coming up in the near future? Well, uh, I am currently working on a personal project, um, building out an app that is does not exist. There's not an app like it. I can't talk too much about it, Jeremy, because most of it is covered under NDAs and things like that. And, sure. um, but I've done quite a bit of market research on it, spent some hard earned cash on it just to, to validate what I expect. And the yeah, ideas around, it's a val uh, valuable idea. Um, but right now I'm just looking for some help on it. I've, I've reached out to some of the colleagues that I went to college with and they've expressed interest in it. But they, I bring them on board, show them what it is, and then two days later, they're they're just kind of gone. Um, 
And I don't blame people for that because, you know, they expect to get paid for the work. Um, but I'm trying to find somebody that I can pay for the work if the idea comes to fruition. Sure. You know, I, I, I'm fine with giving 49% of the company to somebody who helps me build this thing and get it out there. Um, so that's kind of what I'm working on now. I really want to develop a, a new business and um, develop an app that quite literally you might use or a lot of your viewers might use going into the future. So that's that's my current focus outside of my day-to-day -day work. Wow. I'll, I look forward to seeing what that app is. I'm not an iOS developer, so I'm not, I'm not your guy, but uh, hopefully when we put this out, uh, you might generate some interest. So we'll, we'll see what happens. But thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, uh, Matthew. This has been a great conversation. It's uh, been nice getting to know you and I, I look forward to seeing what's in your future. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Jeremy. You have a wonderful day.